All right, folks, so this is the new Garmin Epix, and the Epix shares nearly all the same features as Garmin's new Phoenix 7 line of sport watches, like the ability to track tons of different sports, amazing durability, as well as all their new software features. But it comes with an AMOLED display. Now at this point, you may be thinking like, what's the battery life like? Can you actually view it outdoors? But don't worry, we'll get to all those questions in this video. I think there's a lot of people out there who want the features of a Garmin Phoenix, but would sacrifice some battery life for a more vibrant display. And that's what the Epix is all about, since it's very similar to Garmin's new Phoenix 7 line of sport watches. And I do have another whole video on the new Garmin Phoenix 7s that I'll have linked down in the description below that you can check out once you're done over here. But this video is really all about the new Garmin Epix, and I'll be talking about all the new features as well as some of the differences to the Phoenix 7. And really quick before we get started, if you do find the information in this video useful, do me a favor and just hit that like button down below. It's a small little thing that you can do that'll help this video and the channel quite a bit, and I appreciate it. Okay, so first up, let's talk about this new hardware. So this new Epix comes in one size option with a 47 millimeter case. So it's the same size as the mid-size Phoenix 7. You can choose from a stainless steel version of the Epix, which comes in at $899, or there's also a sapphire edition with titanium that comes in at $999, and the titanium version comes in white or black. And then other than the difference in lenses as well as the bezel materials, the Sapphire editions also come with 32 gigabytes of storage versus 16 gigabytes on the steel version. So with the 32 gigabyte Sapphire editions, these come with topo maps pre-installed in the device. The steel versions with 16 gigabytes, you actually will choose which map regions you want to download onto the watch since it has a little bit less storage to work with. And then the other difference with the Sapphire editions is that these also come with Garmin's new multi-band satellite system feature, which is able to utilize multiple satellite frequencies at once in an effort to get the best GPS accuracy. And in terms of the hardware, on the surface, it's actually kind of hard to tell the difference between a Phoenix 7 and the Epix. It's the same size as the mid-size Phoenix 7. It has the new protected lugs that extend from the bezel over the lugs for extra protection. It also has their new button guard to prevent accidental presses of the start and stop button. It also has Garmin's latest fourth generation elevate heart rate sensor with an SpO2 sensor for measuring blood oxygen saturation levels, which is also now covered in glass versus a plastic coating, which should be a little bit more durable over time. But really the biggest difference between the Epix and the Phoenix 7 is that it has an AMOLED display versus the transflective type on the Phoenix 7. Now, transflective displays have some unique things about them. They are incredibly easy to read in direct sunlight, and they don't consume that much power. So these are the reason we've seen these on the Garmin Phoenix lineup of watches, as well as a ton of other Garmin watches over the years. On the other hand, AMOLED displays are incredibly bright, they have tons of colors, and they're just great to look at, but they consume more battery life. Most smartwatches on the market today with an AMOLED display get like one to two days of battery life. Garmin kind of upped the ante with their Venue smart watch which can get anywhere from like four days to over a week of battery life and the epics well the epics can get up to 16 days of battery life. So Garmin's kind of done one of those have your cake and eat it two type scenarios where you can have an amazing display, but also have very decent battery life. So the Epix has a 1.3 inch AMOLED touchscreen display with a resolution of 416 by 416 pixels. And you can use that touchscreen to navigate throughout the interface. You can use it to scroll through different widgets, including like their heart rate widget, where you can press and hold to scroll where you can actually see your heart rate nearly down to the minute. You can also use it to enter text with their new keyboard. But really the most useful thing about it is using the touchscreen with maps. So with maps, you can use that touchscreen to pan and browse around the maps, and you can also double tap to zoom in if you'd like. And what you'll notice over here on the left are little indicators to tell you that you can still also use the buttons with the maps as well. But what's neat about these is that these are also actual areas of the display that you can use to touch for those controls. And I thought this was really well thought out here because using these controls over here to the side doesn't obstruct your view like having your finger directly over the display. And then you can also switch between the pan and zoom controls using the upper right hand key. But again, don't worry, you can still do everything using their tried and true buttons if you'd like, and they've given you the ability to adjust these settings on a global level where you can choose whether or not to use it for general use like all the smartwatch features, during activities, as well as during sleep. But not only that, they also give you the ability to turn the touchscreen functionality on or off even on an individual activity profile level. So with transflective displays, again, those are going to be incredibly easy to read outdoors, and some AMOLED displays can be a little bit challenging, but the Epix display, just because it's so bright, it's great to view outdoors. There's really no issues here, even in extremely bright conditions, just because the display is so darn bright. And then the display also has an always on option. So by default, the display times out after a certain time period, like a lot of AMOLED devices to save on battery life, but you do have the option of enabling an always on display mode. And this also does work during activities. This always on display mode will consume more battery life and we'll get to the battery life here in just one bit. But being an AMOLED display with more resolution than its Phoenix 7 counterpart, the maps look in pretty incredible here, having tons of detail, colors that really pop. I mean, the map experience on this thing is pretty fantastic. 
So when it comes to the satellite systems that the EPICS can use for recording outdoor activities, just like all the Phoenix 7 models, the EPICS has a normal GPS mode. It also has an all satellite systems mode where it can automatically choose between all five major satellite systems based on the quality of the signal as well as the availability, as well as an ultra track mode which reduces the sampling frequency to increase battery life. And then the Sapphire editions of the EPICS as well as the Phoenix 7 Sapphire Solars come with Garmin's new multi-band all satellite systems mode where it's able to leverage satellite systems on two concurrent frequencies to get the best accuracy. You can choose these settings on a global level and then you can also select a specific setting for an individual activity profile. Now there are a couple features that are only available on the Phoenix 7s and it's not going to be available on the EPICS. So first off is the flashlight feature that comes with the 7X models of the Phoenix 7s but the other is going to be solar charging and I guess at this point it's probably a good time to talk about battery life. So like I was mentioning earlier, the Epics can get up to 16 days of battery life using it as a smartwatch without recording any outdoor activities. And that's gonna be using the gesture mode where the display turns off when you're not interacting with it. 16 days is pretty stellar. And then if you want to use the always on display, then you can get up to six days of battery life using it as a smartwatch. And then for GPS battery life for recording outdoor activities, you can get up to 42 hours in GPS mode using the gesture mode, up to 30 hours with GPS using the always on display, up to 32 hours using the all satellite systems mode, and then up to 20 hours using the multi-band mode on the Sapphire editions with gesture. So now let's get on to some software features and let's first start out with maps. So like I was mentioning earlier, the Sapphire editions of the Epics come with 32 gigabytes of storage and Topo maps preloaded, where the Steel editions, those come with 16 gigabytes of storage. So you'll actually choose which regions you want to download to the watch. And how you'll do this is using their new map manager tool, which is actually found at the bottom of the activity profile list where you have completely free access to download Topo maps from around the world. And it does this using Wi-Fi. Now, one thing I would point out here though, is that depending on your Wi-Fi connection, this could take a bit depending on the maps that you're trying to download, but you still can manage the maps using Garmin Express on your computer, which can definitely speed up the process quite a bit. And circling back to the ski maps really quick, so Garmin has updated these with what they call Ski View, where these maps now have actual resort names at a broader zoom level. But more importantly, these maps, when you zoom in, have actual labels for the slopes. And these are color coordinated just like black runs, blue runs, green runs, and so forth. And there's just a lot of detail with these maps. And then in addition, there's also now cross-country ski trails, and these include both Nordic trails as well as skate skiing trails. And then for some more software features, they also have a new navigation feature called Up Ahead, which shows a list of upcoming points along your course, like water reminders, food reminders, shelters, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And these are as simple as adding course points to your course in Garmin Connect. So when you're creating your course or even editing your course, you can click on this add course point up here and you can choose what kind of course point you'd like to add and even choose a custom name for it. And then when your course syncs over to your device and you choose that course in the navigation settings, there's just an extra data page that just pops up showing those upcoming points. And then on the training and performance side of things, Garmin has their new real-time stamina feature. So Garmin has had their performance condition feature before, but this is kind of a different approach to things. So when you go to start like any workout, you kind of only have so much gas in the tank. And this is what Garmin calls your potential stamina. And this is indicated on the left of that data page, as well as that little bar in the middle. So I've actually found that there's some correlation to your recovery time. Like this particular morning, I wasn't quite fully recovered from my workout the day before. And you notice that it doesn't show a full 100% potential. So you can think of potential stamina as kind of like your longer term energy or maybe even like your entire gas tank. And then with the stamina stat up here, this is what they call your current stamina or more short term energy. In theory, both of these will deplete over the course of your workout, but your current stamina is something that may actually come back. And the best way to think about this is with something like intervals where you can only exert yourself on an anaerobic level for a certain amount of time before you have to stop. But after some recovery time, you can actually do another interval. And that's really what's being reflected with the current stamina figure here. And when you're depleting your current stamina, that's indicated with a downward red arrow. And if you're recovering and restoring your current stamina, that's indicated with a green upward arrow. And then in theory, after you've recovered, your current stamina and your potential should pretty much level out. And it also may be easier to understand this feature if we take a look at Garmin Connect, where you can view this information with a new graph. So right here, you can see that my actual stamina is being depleted on this interval where my heart rate and power is higher, and then it replenishes after some recovery time. I thought this feature was pretty cool and it provides some real-time training feedback, and it's just another thing that you can have in your toolbox for training. And then for another training related feedback feature, they also have a new visual race predictor. So before their race predictor just showed what you could theoretically achieve right now for common running distances based on your past training. So they've expanded on this idea by now giving you a chart of your potential race times over the last four weeks. So you could kind of use this as a guide to see how your workouts are affecting your potential race times. And there's also some new activity profiles, including a new kiteboarding as well as a windsurfing activity profile, just like the Phoenix 7 lineup. So I haven't ever done either of these 
so I can't help you in terms of a demo, but here's what the activity data pages look like for those of you who do these types of activities. And they also do have a special feature called Speed Pro, which may be beneficial for speed surfers. And then the Epix also gets a new health snapshot feature that came out with the Venue 2 and the Foreigner 945 LT, where it's able to take multiple data points at one time, including your SpO2 level, heart rate, respiration rate, as well as stress level. And there's also some new features surrounding sleep settings. So they now have a new sleep mode feature where you can choose specific settings for your watch during your sleep. So first up, you can set your sleep schedule on a daily basis, but then you can also choose to either keep your current watch face during your sleep or enable a special sleep watch face, which is a much simpler and less bright watch face that'll probably be a little bit less jarring if you happen to look at your display at night. And then you can also set up a specific brightness level as well as a timeout during your sleep, as well as whether you want the touchscreen enabled or not, as well as a do not disturb mode and whether you'd like to conserve battery at night with the battery saver mode, which turns off features like the heart rate sensor. And then just like the Phoenix 7s, the Epix also gets their new real-time setting sync feature, which allows you to change your watch settings from your smartphone directly to your watch in real time. And this is something that people have been waiting for for quite some time. So with stuff like data pages and data fields, this is especially useful since there's just so many data fields that you can choose from. It's just much easier to see what's available and it's super convenient to use. And again, this is in real time here. So you can already have started your activity and still change the settings and they just appear on the watch. And then one more thing I just discovered today. So I had my Garmin Connect smartphone app open and then I was editing a sensor name on the Epix. Well, what happened was that when the keyboard popped up, it actually popped up the keyboard on my phone as well. So I could actually just use my phone's keyboard to enter the sensor name, which is so much more convenient. That was pretty darn cool. So I've been using watches with transflective displays for years, mainly because of battery life, and I've been totally okay with them. But after wearing the Garmin Phoenix 7, as well as the Garmin Epix back to back, which have very similar feature sets, I have to say that it's pretty nice having that super bright display. So I think the Epix is going to be a really great option for those of you out there who want pretty much all the features of the Phoenix 7, but with just a brighter, more vibrant display. It's definitely not going to be the battery life that you're going to get out of a transflective device, but the battery life is still very, very respectable. Anyhow, that's the new Garmin Epix, and definitely also check out all the details on the new Garmin Phoenix 7 line of sport watches, which I have another video on that I'll have a link down in the description below. And if you found the information in this video useful, or if you just like the video, make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe for plenty more sports tech videos that are coming soon. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video.